of shit A piece of shit Oh, Jay You suck How's it going? Uh, welcome to uh, the second episode of Talking to Myself with uh, Jake Letizia. That's me. And uh, I want to talk about picking your nose. Okay? Every person in the world picks their fucking nose. Okay? And if you're sitting there right now going, I don't pick my nose, you're a fucking liar. All right? Every single person picks their fucking nose, okay? This is not debatable. You started out as a young kid finagling with your nose in public, just not having a care in the world because you don't know it's gross yet, just digging in all day. Some of us eat boogers, some of us don't. Personally, I never ate my boogers, all right? I'm not saying that I was free of weirdness because I used to eat Lego heads, but I never ate boogers, okay? I liked plastic more than I liked organic, I guess. But that's how you start. You start willy-nilly picking your fucking nose, and then what happens is a teacher or your parent goes, don't do that. And you go, why? And they go, because it's not, you. it's gross. They don't really have a good reason. No one ever has given a really good reason. It's just, it looks gross. It's not... If you pick your nose, people aren't going to want to fuck you. When you, If you keep doing this, uh, uh, you're going to reach an age where people are not going to procreate if you keep fucking digging in there while they're seeing it. But the thing is, that's the only part we really shed. And also, we never shed picking our nose in public, okay? What happens is you abandon digging into your nose in public. But right now, right now, you're going to tell me, I don't care how fucking old you are. Okay? You're going to tell me that when there's a booger in your nose, you don't do one of these? You don't do one of those when it's on the fucking rim of your nostril? You don't do one of these subtle, while you're looking at your fucking book on the subway, one of these fucking, and the little flick to fling it the fuck away from your face? You don't do that. The little pinch and roll? You don't do that? You don't do the, the pinch and roll down here too? It's not picking, it's pinching and rolling. But it's still fucking digging for those boogers, man. You do that. I know you do that. Everybody fucking does that. Everybody does that. Okay? This is not a debate. Alright? So if we can agree that everybody does the little pinch roll, everybody does that, then you also must agree with me, which is where I lose people, which is where... Uh, an ex of mine denied she ever did this. When you get home, right? And you got a big fucking booger in your nose and you got to get it out and you're blowing and blowing with the, to the, t the fucking t t <laughs> tissue paper, toilet paper, whatever you got. If you run out of tissues, you use that fucking toilet paper. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, you got the tissues and you're blowing your fucking nose. You're blowing, you're blowing, you're blowing and it, and it won't come out, right? You start digging, you start picking with, with the tissue around your finger, right? Because you're still not trying to be a kid. You're still trying to be a little less gross. But you know exactly what happens once you can't can't quite get it. Once you can't quite dig it out with the tissue around your finger, you need to you need to feel the actual fucking structure of that booger with your bare finger so that you can perfectly just hook it out. You go into your bathroom alone and you fucking dig that shit out of your nose. You do that. You fuck. There's not a single person in the world who doesn't fucking do that. And I'm shouting. Yes, I'm shouting. I'm holding this further and further away from me because you do that. You fucking do that. Okay. When the tissue doesn't work, you shove that finger deep into your nostril and you hook that shit out. And there's a little bit of blood on your fucking booger, but you feel so clear and empty that you are fucking on top of the world, okay? We all do that. We all do that. We should all embrace that. I don't know why we deny that. My ex denied it for a long time. And then finally, when we were like six months in, she goes, yeah, I, I, I picked my nose. Yeah, I know you fucking do it. We all do it. 
You got to get that booger out, man. You got to fucking get that booger out. Anyway, heated start, man. Very heated. Booger talk. You got to fucking get those boogies out of your nose, man. Do you know what's the worst? When you have a booger in your nose and nobody fucking tells you. Why? Why? What kind of bullshit friends do I have that they don't tell me that a booger's in my nose? If if I have a booger in my nose and I'm hanging out with a friend and then I get home that night and see that there was a booger there, I call them up and I go, when did you know? When did you fucking see it, dude? And they go, oh, I saw it early in the night. I saw it like when we went to the first bar. You saw it at the first bar and you didn't say shit? So I was talking to people with a full fucking glob of booger in my goddamn nostril? Yeah, dude. We're not friends anymore, man. You should be looking out for me. I was eating McDonald's one time, and, you know, I was ravenous. So I was fucking, I was really fucking munching it. I was really getting it down as quickly as possible because I was a hungry, hungry boy. And... My friend's girlfriend looks at me and she goes, she looks at me like disgusted, like really grossed out. And I'm like, yeah. She goes, you have food in your beard. Okay, dude. I didn't know. How am I supposed to know that, man? I mean, thanks for letting me know. But also, why are you so fucking disgusted? Why are you so grossed out by a thing that I clearly didn't know? I didn't feel it in my beard and go, you know what? Fuck it. I want French fry in my beard. No, dude. I didn't know. You don't know when you got a booger right in your fucking nostril staring every girl in the face that you're trying to talk to. You don't know when that's happening. And if your friends do not back you up, do not tell you about it, they fucking suck, okay? If my roommate has a booger in her nose, I tell her immediately. You know why? Because she doesn't want to be talking to people with a booger in her fucking nose, okay? You tell me there's a booger in my nose, I go to the bathroom, I pick that shit out, dude. I fucking do. It's not picking your nose if you do it by yourself in the bathroom. That's what we all agree in society, okay? <laughs> picking your nose is a fucking heated subject, man. Here's, the, here's where I draw the line, though. Everyone picks their nose. Everyone does. But I think there's an age limit to eating your boogers. I do, man. I do. If you're over the age of six and you eat your fucking boogers, you gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta stop. A couple years ago, my friend was at my house and, uh, we're just hanging out. We're casually chilling. We're both probably 22 at the time. We're both hanging out. Um, I'm sitting in a chair. He's lying on... He's like lounging on... We're in my brother's room. He's like lounging on my brother's bed and my brother's on the computer. So in the middle of talking, I see in the corner of my eye my friend picking his nose. And to me, I go, oh, every human being on earth does this in private. So, you know, I can't get too mad at him. I do think it's gross. It's gross to full-on pick your nose in public. It is. We can all do that in the privacy of our own home, and we all know that we all do that in the privacy of our own home. But to do it so blatantly in front of me and my brother, it was a little disturbing. But I was like, you know what? That's gross, but my friend has some gross tendencies. It's okay. But then in the corner of my eye, I see the the finger leave his nose and then go into his mouth, and then I see chewing. I see the, the the ripping apart of a booger in his mouth. This 23-year-old kid, or 22, doesn't matter. This older-than-six-year-old man is eating his fucking boogers in front of us. And he thought that we weren't looking. Still very bold. Still very bold. We're in. If we're in a room with you, if if there are other people in the room with you, don't pick your nose, and definitely don't eat the fucking boogers. Okay. So he eats it, and right as he's chewing it, I do one of these. So I'm looking this way, talking to my brother, and right as I see him chewing it, right right as I fucking see it in my peripheral, I go like this. 
Did you just eat your fucking boogers? And he looks at me, he looks at me like this. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just ate my fucking boogers. Yeah, yeah, I know you did. Yeah, I know you did. Because I'm fucking disgusted right now. So I, so I, so then he's, we get in the car because we're going to fucking, I don't know. We, I was in my hometown, so probably McDonald's. That's so that's the only thing to do in my hometown. Go to McDonald's or go to a bar that either no one is at or a bunch of 50-year-olds and two 20-year-olds are at. So, and he doesn't drink. So we were going to McDonald's or some bullshit or to his house, whatever the fuck. And I'm like, dude, you can't do that. <laughs> It was like the most adamant I was to a friend ever of like, you can't do something. You can't eat your boogers, man. I'm concerned for you. I don't want anyone else to see that. I don't want anyone who will judge you to see that. Because I'm somebody who loves you to death. If you eat your boogers, I'll stay friends with you. But even me seeing that, I love this kid. And even... Even someone who loves him, seeing him eat his own boogers, I thought for a second, oh man... I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> How am I going to look at your face knowing that boogers are just on and off those teeth every day? I don't want to fucking... And you're not six. You're not four years old. You're 22 eating a batch of boogers, dude. That's fucking disgusting. Oh my God, dude. So I asked him, and he goes, I don't know, man, it's just something I never shed. It's like one of those things that I've never shed. And I was like, well, shed it now, man. If there's ever a moment to shed your fucking booger habits, shed it right now. After your, your best friend of 15 years is so grossed out, he might never speak to you again. This is a pivotal moment for you of not eating fucking boogies anymore. Oh my god, dude. See, that's a good friend. A good friend is grossed out by something you do and goes, hey, man, you can't do that. Or, hey, man, this is how I feel about that thing. I'm just letting you know. All right? A fucking fake friend sees a booger in your nose and goes, hey, man, he'll figure it out. No, I won't. Okay? I won't unless you got my back, you fucking non-friend anymore, asshole. Fuck you. Anyway, man, I'm having fun right now, dude. This booger talk is getting me fucking heated. But yeah, I used to eat Lego heads. I did. I used to eat Lego heads. I used to go into my brother's room. Uh, I have a vivid memory of doing it once. I think I was three years old. This might be my first memory. I think this is my first memory. My first memory is me eating a fucking Lego head. It's either that or on the steps. I have two memories of being three years old. One of them... Well, that's not true. I have a bunch. But my two earliest memories are I was sitting on the steps thinking about how I have... Because when I was in preschool, I had every other day off. So I remember I was sitting on the steps like understanding the concept of like, oh, I don't have school tomorrow, but I have school the next day. And I was sliding down the steps of my house, like on my butt, just like sliding down as I was learning scheduling in my brain for the first time. That's That, that I think, is my first memory. But I can't remember if that's the first one. It feels like it is, but I can't tell if that's the first one or if it was when I went into my brother's room and it was pitch black. Although I think it was during the day. It was pitch black in my brother's room and there was only like a little bit of light either from the moonlight or from like the sun coming through, sh coming through closed shades. Because they were those white, uh, kind of a little bit translucent shades where, like, the sun would still seep through it a little bit even though you were blocking it. And I walked in, and I think we had company over, and I just went over to my brother's Legos, and I popped off one of the heads, and I just swallowed it. And I did that constantly, dude. Apparently, I choked on one one time. I don't remember that. But I did that all the fucking time, and I don't know why. I like that synthetic shit, man. I like that fucking human-made hard plastic, dude. That's what I fucking like. 
I don't like that organic booger stuff. I don't. I need some man-made plastic, gonna fucking cut up my insides, Lego head. I mean, thank God it was a Lego head and not some other piece of Lego. How many... Did I try other Legos and Lego heads? I was like, oh, that's the smoothest to go down. Like, how much of the inside of my body is fucked up from trying to swallow miscellaneous Legos? Like, I don't... <laughs> like, I don't know, man. It might be... my my All my insides might be fucked the fuck up, dude. Oh, man. Dude, I'm getting kind of loud on this. I hope... I don't have a fucking sound engineer, so I hope my... And I turned the levels up for this one because they felt a little low for the last podcast. So I'm so worried that, like, I'm going to be blasted out this whole time. We'll see, dude. We'll see. I'll use the camera audio if this is fucked. It's a work in progress, my guys. It's a work in fucking progress, okay? Second podcast talking about boogers and swallowing Lego heads. This shit is fucking sick, my guy. Where else are you going to get Lego head eating content? <laughs> but yeah, man. I used to eat fucking Lego heads. I used to be a real piece of shit when I was younger. Dude, I remember my first... Oh, man. This was so mean. Oh. There was this short... Oh, this There was this kid. I think his name was Steven. He was the nicest fucking kid. He was the nicest kid ever. And I remember he was kind of like a short, chubby kid. And he was so sweet and so fucking nice. And he had this crew cut. And I remember first grade, he sat next to me. First day of first grade, he was sitting next to me. And uh, we were doing like a crossword puzzle together or something. And we were just hitting it off, having a great time. And I remember he said... do you want to be my friend? And I said, yeah. And we both became friends. It was such a, like a pure, innocent, like, this is my first friend. Like, do you want to be, fr I don't know how, I don't know how to cultivate the friendship because I'm fucking in first grade. What age is that? Five. But, so I'm just going to outright ask, do you want to be my friend? And I said, yeah. And we were fucking friends and it was sweet as shit. And then I remember later, I, there was like some sort of kickball team at recess or something, and I really wanted to play on it, but they already had all the kids to play on the team. And I really wanted to be on it because another one of my friends was on the team and I wanted to play kickball with them. And Steven was on my friend's team. Hold on, I got six. All right, word. Okay. Sorry about that. Got to text this fucking thing. Oh, shit. I only got nine minutes left in this first half. Anyway, dude, time's flying. Okay, so this kid, Steven. So Steven was on my friend's team. And I remember I was really angry and really upset. We were all walking from class to... Or we were walking from the playground back to class, and I was like, "Let me, like, let me play tomorrow. Let me play tomorrow. I, I, I'm good at kickball. I'm, I'm so good at kickball. Like, I'm better than other people who are playing." And I was just this little angry five-year-old kid, I guess. And Stephen was, and 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 I didn't think Stephen was near me at all. And so I say to my other friend, I go, uh, "He goes, well, I don't want to kick anyone off. Who are we gonna kick off?" And I was like, "Kick Stephen out. I'm definitely better than him. He's short. I'm better. I'm better at kick." than him oh my god and and then steven was right behind me and i didn't know and my friend rightfully so was like nah i'm not gonna kick steven off the team what are you talking about and steven was right behind me the kid who asked so preciously can i be your friend and i said yeah we were friends and i just fucking insulted him for no reason i insulted him because i want to play kickball and i remember he looked at me and he was so sad and so angry and just disappointed. And that was probably the first moment. That's probably my first moment of like. Like hurting someone's feelings. And I remember that so vividly. Just his face was just like. Like what the fuck man. <laughs> like he didn't know the word fuck yet. But in his brain he was thinking what the fuck dude. We fr I asked you to we were friend. That Remember that crossword puzzle the first day. And I still, I still think about that sometimes of like, oh, that, that really hurt 
hurting that kid's feelings. And it made me learn something about like, why would like, I didn't, I I'm so grateful. He was behind me to hear that because it made me go like, why the fuck did I do that? I didn't even mean that shit. I didn't even mean what I said. And it hurt him. I don't want to do that. I don't know how we got on that. But I guess I'm just talking about early memories, man. Early memories and early moments and how how they affect you. And the dumb shit you do. The dumb shit you do when you're very young and just stupid. You don't know what's going on. You know, you you try out being shitty a little bit. And, uh... Hopefully it's something minor like that. Hopefully you're not fucking trying to do something like illegal. Hopefully it's just like a little insult. I mean, I'm five years old. What am I going to do? Rob a fucking bank? (laughs) But, uh, yeah, it's really interesting to remember the moments of like things that you did that were not cool, but they really like they really fucking made you a better person feeling like, oh, man. I mean, I probably... I mean, I obviously, like, I was five, so I had way more, I had a lot more dumb shit to do to learn that shit is not the right thing to do, but, like, that was my first moment of, of, wow, that was, that was wrong, I shouldn't have done that, and, uh, that kid was so fucking nice that we, we be, we stayed friends after that, I said sorry, I apologized, and, uh, we stayed friends, and we kept doing fucking crossword puzzles together. Dude, that was crazy. First grade was fucking insane, dude. There was another kid in my class. He uh, he tried to cut off my teacher's fingers with scissors. There was this kid who was a new kid, and he would freak the fuck out. He would get real freaked out in class. And one day in class, and my, well, I mean, I went to like, I mean, this was years ago, so they didn't know how to handle kids. That would freak out or that had had uh, uh, other issues like this kid clearly had had stuff he was working out. But my teacher was just used to, you know, run of the mill kid. So when this kid started freaking out, the only thing she knew to do was like tell him to calm down, which doesn't, you know, it doesn't work for some fucking kids. So one day he was freaking out. He was freaking the fuck out. And my teacher just was like telling him to be quiet, tell him to go to timeout, because that's what they would do. If you if you did something bad, they would tell you to go to timeout. So she was telling him to go to timeout, and uh, he was going now, 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 and he was really fucking like vicious to her. Um, and my teacher like went over to him and was like, you have to go to timeout. You have to go to timeout. And the more he got, the closer she got, he started throwing things at her. He started actually fucking throwing things at her. Then he took scissors and he threw them at a kid's head. And the, and it almost hit this, this girl, Michelle in the fucking eye, dude. It almost hit her in the fucking eye. She could have went blind. Cause this kid was fucking just freaking out and nobody knew how to keep him under control. And I mean, this kid was just, It wasn't his fault. He was a new kid. He was in a weird situation. He was freaking out. You know, he was, I don't know what his, his, you know, family history was, but it was, it was not good enough to be freaking the fuck out in class and throwing scissors at kids. So he throws the scissors. And then at that point, my teacher freaks out because another kid almost got hurt. So she runs over and she, she just hugs this kid from the back and she's grabbing his hands. And she's, she's bringing him to the door because at this point she wants to bring him to the principal's office. And the kid's going, no, no, and he's fucking thrashing about. And then they get near the scissors that are on the ground. And the kid picks up the scissors and he starts trying to cut her fucking fingers off because they're clasped around him. <laughs> this is the most fucking savage shit I've ever seen. Literally, I was, I was waiting to see my fucking teacher's fingers get sliced the fuck off. So eventually she gets the fucking scissors out of his hands and throws them and then she takes him out of the room and brings him to the fucking principal's office. That was five years old. I went from insulting a kid, feeling terrible about it, patching that up, to watching another kid try and cut a fucking person's fingers off. (laughs) I had a wild fucking first grade, man. It was a fun time. It was fucking crazy. Oh, man. There's so, now, now all everything's flooding back from first grade. There was also I got my glasses in first grade for the first time, dude. I <laughs> what 
When I was younger, they put me in all these remedial reading classes because uh, I guess it was like, well, how old are you in first grade? It's either five or six. Anyway, but before first grade, I guess my parents didn't get my eyes checked out yet or the doctor just didn't. I guess at my checkups, they didn't check my eyes. So no one knew I needed glasses. So whenever I would try and read stuff, I couldn't read it. I couldn't reta- I couldn't retain anything I read or or read the words out loud. So uh, they just thought I was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> they literally just thought I was stupid. They were like, oh, fuck, he can't read. And they put me in remedial reading classes. And I was in like a summer reading program because they thought I couldn't fucking read. And then in first grade... For some reason, I guess my mom was like, well, maybe his eyes are fucked. And she had the doctor at my checkup check my eyes. And they're like, oh, yeah, your eyes are fucked. And then uh, they're like, and then the optometrist was like, yeah, you got a like bad stigmatism in your right eye. And I was like, OK. And then they got me glasses. And then after that, once I got glasses, I was like, I was like, you know, flash forward years. I was in fucking AP English. <laughs> Imagine if I lived in a time without fucking glasses. I think about that all the time. Imagine. I think so much fucked up shit happened because people couldn't see. You know what I'm talking about? I think there was a lot of accidental murder back in the day because people would get fucking migraines because everything was all blurry and that would give them severe headaches and they would fucking thrash about. I think people were getting bad headaches and then getting fucking wasted because they couldn't see and then they were getting wasted and then all that drunkenness was causing... Even more problems. Because then they were getting drunk. They were getting woozy. They were falling all over the place. Everyone had a fucking sword. People were stumbling into other people with swords. That's how fucking just random murders started happening. (laughs) That'd be so funny. If that was the reason why there was so much fucking violence back then. It's because nobody could see. So people were just like bumping into each other. So next thing you know, you accidentally stab someone in the throat. And you're like, oh fuck. And then five other guys were like, you stabbed some... (laughs) Brian <laughs> And then he started, you're like, oh, now I guess I gotta fucking kill everybody else now. <laughs> oh shit, sorry. Alright, that's the alarm for the first part. Hold on, I gotta cut this and then, uh, I'm gonna take a break and then we'll be here for the second part. Alright? Cool. Alright. Alright, and we're back. Okay. So what was I talking about? Oh yeah, my glasses. Yeah, people, I do think that maybe some violence got started because people just couldn't fucking see, you know? People were cheating on people because they couldn't tell. They thought it was their wife. Oh, Cynthia! (laughs) Oh, it's Brian, my husband. Brian, I'm Ryan. What the fuck, dude? Oh, I wish I wish something existed so I could fucking see. I wish some sort of lenses were in front of my eyes so that I knew who my husband was. That's it. Every every act of adultery and violence back in the day was caused because there were no glasses and no one could see. That's why. That's why. Let's blame it all on that. Let's blame it all on that. Oh man. Anyway, what the fuck am I talking about? Um Okay, no, so I got glasses, and I remember my first day of having glasses, uh, my friend looks at me and goes, what's up, four eyes? And I remember being so offended by how stupid that joke was. Even at six, five or six years old, I had seen enough Disney Channel original movies to know that four eyes was a hack fucking insult to someone with glasses. So I looked I looked at him side-eyed. At six years old, I looked at him like, what? And I and I turned around, went to my teacher, and went, he just called me four eyes. And my teacher looks at him and goes, Did you just call him four eyes? And the kid's like, uh, yeah. And she goes, Well, you're in timeout now. And then he was like, oh, what? <laughs> he was so he was so flabbergasted that I that I told him that I told on him immediately. Cause fuck him, dude. Call me four eyes. Have a better joke than that, that fucking hack bullshit joke. I I still believe to this day that if he was just like, hey, nice glasses, you fucking asshole, I would have been like, alright, cool. Like it was the fact that he said four eyes 
that made me go, you know what, dude? You deserve to be punished for that one. You deserve, you deserve to have the teacher and everybody know that you fucking called me four eyes? Be original, you six-year-old hack. <laughs> anyway. What else? Now I'm just thinking about fucking childhood memories. That same kid. Oh, man. I'll get into that another time. That kid. I got a lot of fucking stories about that kid. I'll do I'll do a po- I'll do I'll do a podcast where it's all childhood stories because now they're just all fucking flooding back to my my brain right now. Um, but what I did want to talk about is the other night I got banned from Tinder. Now this is the second dating app I got banned from. And before you think I'm a, it's a for a nefarious reason, I I I know the reason for both instances. I made a new Tinder, and because uh, I heard that like it, the algorithm memorizes your swipes or something like that, and then like it won't show you certain people if you swipe too many people. I don't know. When I first got Tinder, when I was like fucking 20 or whatever it was I didn't know how to use it I would I would do the old swipe just swipe a bunch so I don't know I was like let me just fresh start so I made a new tinder and uh there's a lot of accounts on tinder and bumble where people put their venmo in in the uh in your bio or whatever um because I guess there's like I don't know, like prostitution or just like people like, or like, you know, subtle prostitution, like, hey, let's go on a date and you can Venmo me and we'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know how quite how it works. The the closest I've ever got to like figuring out how it worked was I I matched with somebody who uh, was like, hey, uh, Venmo me or something. Or like, like pay me to go out or something. And I matched with her and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I couldn't believe, I was like, and I messaged her and I was like, (laughs) I said, what's your Venmo? And she goes, don't have Venmo, uh, PayPal question mark or something like that. I go, yeah, what's your PayPal? And she gave it to me. And I was like, what the fuck? And I, uh, for a second, I wanted to like request a thousand bucks from her. (laughs) I didn't do it though. I was a little scared. I should have done that though. I wanted to, cause it was so crazy. That's such a weird, crazy thing to do to give someone your fucking. I get. I guess some guys just fucking throw money at people. I guess. I mean, I don't know. If I could get guys to just pay me money, I would fucking do it. Why not? Anyway, so I guess Tinder doesn't like that people do that. Put their Venmo or or PayPal or whatever on. Uh, on their app, because I guess it could be that they're doing illegal stuff. I don't know. But, because that's a thing on Tinder, I was like, oh, it'd be funny if I put a fake Venmo on there. So I said, my Venmo is, and then in quotes I said, me needing a lot of money, needing money a lot now. Which is a reference to Always Sunny, where Charlie's mom has cancer, or pretend she has cancer, spoiler spoiler alert, um... And, sh- and he, Charlie's illiterate, so he gives his mom a speech to say to the church congregation who are all at the bar, and she goes, uh, me need money, me needing a lot of money now, or something along those lines. So I had that as my fake Venmo, because I thought it'd be funny if people like, if a girl likes Always Sunny, she'd be like, oh, wow, that's, you know, I like Always Sunny as well. Also, oh, this is, you know, satire. This is poignant satire of the dating medium, okay? This is cutting-edge content. You have ve- you have people Venmoing all over your fucking app, and I'm making a mockery of it, dude. Anyway, I got banned because they thought it was a real fucking Venmo. At least check the Venmo out. At least make sure the Venmo is real or not. It's not. It was a joke. Okay, Cupid. This happened fucking probably a year ago now. I got banned from that because 
because I filled my profile out like this. I'll look it up. I put it on Instagram. They should follow me on Instagram. If they followed me on Instagram, they would know that I was fucking around. Okay. This was... January 15th. Yeah, this was a year ago. So... On my profile, I said, most people that know, because on, on the profiles, there's like all these sections and then you answer the sections of like, the, like, you know, most people describe you as this, you, you write an answer. So this is what I wrote for my answers on my profile. Most people that know me would say I'm a murderer. I wrote, I'm a, mur- a murderer. Current goal to murder. My worst quality, I murder people. My golden rule, always murder. A movie I've watched over and over again, American Psycho. I value I value people's ability to murder. I spend a lot of time thinking about murder. On a typical Wednesday, I am murdering. The most private thing I'm willing to, to admit, I've murdered. For our first date, let's murder. Okay? Obviously, I'm fucking joking, alright? If I was going to kill somebody on a dating app, I wouldn't come at you that obvious. That doesn't make any fucking sense, dude. And guess what? And guess what? I got more likes and messages from that profile than I ever did from a fucking normal profile. So, how come ever all of your users understand the comedy of it, but you don't understand it, okay, Cupid? This is fucked up. These dating profiles are anti-comedy, okay? That's fucking funny. <laughs> Saying I'm gonna murder people? I'm poking fun at the fact that there are probably actual fucking murderers on your goddamn site and you're not banning their accounts because that's because on their accounts it says, hey, my name's Jimmy. I like roller skating and fun times at the park and let's just go on an adventure and have a fun journey together. Meanwhile, he's fucking cutting girls up. Me, I'm making a funny joke. I'm making fun of that motherfucker and my account gets banned and this guy keeps murdering people. It's fucking Bullshit, my guy. And I contacted OkCupid, and they never fucking responded to me. Those assholes. Fuck you guys. (laughs) Oh, man. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, maybe my jokes are too uh, crazy. Maybe they don't translate. On the, on the internet, but once I started making crazier jokes like that on dating apps, people were responding more, because they're like, oh, I get it, but not the fucking creators of the app, because they don't know what the fuck is going on, these old fucks. <laughs> Listen, okay, Cupid, you're not in tune. You don't know what your users like. People liked my murderous profile, because they knew it was fucking a joke. <sighs> oh, man. It's probably for the best. I fucking hate dating apps. <laughs> I think I'm slow. I think I'm like, I mean, at this point on dating apps, I purposely do stuff like that just to see, just to see what happens. Because you might as well have fun with it. It's such a fucking irritating thing that everybody does. Everybody has d- dating apps and fucking hates them. It's true. I haven't met one single person who I've been like, oh, you're on Tinder? And they're like, yeah, dude, it's fucking sick. Dude, Tinder? It's literally the best thing I've ever done with my phone, dude. It's the best app I have. No, it's always like, yeah. I go, how are you going on any good dates? They're like, nah. It's not, they don't, they, they aren't good tools for dating. Because... You don't, I don't know. There's nothing organic about it. It's just like, I don't know. For me, Tinder is always, you match with somebody, then you're talking back and forth to them, but you never see their face. You don't know their mannerisms. You don't know what they sound like. You don't know, you don't know how they chew. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's why I don't understand people who, like, are on Tinder or on Bumble and they talk to people for fucking weeks. 
You're going to invest a month of time into a person before you even know how they chew? What if you go on a date with her and she orders chicken and she takes the chicken and she starts going... You're going to stare at her going, oh my god, I just wasted a fucking month because I can't date someone who chews like a psychopath. And same thing for him. You're gonna you're you're gonna talk for a month with a guy who who might end up murdering you. You gotta find out immediately if he's a murderer or not. And guess who's not a murderer? The guy who has his profile saying I'm a murderer because it's clearly a fucking joke. No, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny though because the worst I have to worry about for dating is that I is that uh, it's not a good time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the worst case scenario for me is that I'm irritated the entire date because the person sucks. But worst case scenario for a woman is that she gets fucking murdered. <laughs> oh, that's so fucked up. <sighs> Men need to calm down. That's my advice. Uh, that's like a, my advice to every guy that I meet about dating. Just calm down, dude. Calm the fuck down. I just think a lot of guys are, they're very desperate. They're very like, how do I, I need her to, but she's got to like me. She doesn't have to like you, man. Everybody, this is how people should date. You should go into a date like this. I don't know this person and they don't know me. And we both are just figuring out if we suck or not. I mean, I kind of touched upon this in the last fucking podcast, but that's what it should be. A date should be two people figuring out if they're going to kiss at the end of the night. That's that's all a date should be. And sometimes you go, eh, I don't want to kiss this person. And then you just hug and go, have a nice night. And then other nights you're like, fuck, I, I, you want to kiss the person the moment you guys start talking to each other. And that's a good night. If you guys end up kissing, it's great. A lot of guys take it very, they take it so personally when a girl doesn't like them. They take it so fucking personally. I was at the bar and this guy uh, was approached this girl and he starts talking to her. And she goes, uh, he's like, oh, like I like your tattoo. Oh, you're looking at tattoos? Because she was looking at tattoos on her phone. And she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, they're my boyfriend's tattoos. He's a tattoo artist. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, where's he work? And she's like, uh, over on the Lower East Side. He goes, what's the name of it? And he starts drilling her on whether or not her boyfriend's fucking real. And you could tell by the tone of his voice and his fucking death-staring eyes that, like, he was like, you don't have a boyfriend in his brain. He just decided, like, you don't have a boyfriend. I don't... That's a weird... Like, okay, it, say she did make up the boyfriend. If suddenly he gets her in a corner where it's obvious that she lied... What's going to happen then? Ha, I got you. You don't have a boyfriend. Ha, you were lying, huh? And she goes, yeah. And he goes, well, do you, so you interested now? No, dude. (laughs) No, I didn't have a boyfriend. I just didn't want you to talk to me. Like if somebody says they have a boyfriend, just go, she's not like, that's the nicest way someone could turn you down. That someone saying they have a boyfriend is someone going, I don't want to directly reject you. So I'll pretend I have a boyfriend so that you feel a little bit better. Just believe the lie. And if it's true, it's true. And if it's not true, just believe she has a boyfriend and believe that's the reason she doesn't like you, dude. She's trying to protect your fucking self-esteem. I don't know. Guys take it personally. They get fucking angry when they get rejected. But some women get like that too. I mean, I was at a bar and uh, and this girl was hitting on me and uh, I just well, I wasn't interested. And I guess it, it became kind of apparent that I wasn't interested. And instead of her being like, oh, this kid's not interested and like walking away, she starts looking at me and she goes, oh, I get it. You're gay. And I was like, what? And she was like, oh, I get it. You're fucking gay. You're a fucking gay guy. You're gay. And I was just thinking like, what year is this? Like, it's 2019. Like, I don't, uh, why do you talk? So I just went, I went, sure. 
<laughs> I went, yeah, sure, I'm gay. Because what the fuck? What? What? It, again, what does she expect to happen? That I'm going to be like, I'm not gay. And then she's going to be like, all right, well, prove it. Fuck me. And I'm going to be like, oh, shit. All right, I guess I got to fuck you. No, dude. I'd rather find a guy and suck his dick in front of her to prove that I'm gay than to fucking have sex with this weird homophobic woman. What is... What a weird motivation to be a bigot. Like... That's a lot of insecurity. To go from... Like, that's so crazy. To hate an entire group of people because somebody rejected you? That's so weird. That's so weird. That's so weird. I don't know. But of course, you know. I think she was from Staten Island or something. Yeah, some some guys just can't handle rejection. Some, some I guess some women can't handle rejection either. Just some people can't handle rejection. Some people can't fucking do it. So weird. Girl turned homophobic because, like, I guess in her mind she was like, why, people, people need to have that, that feeling of like, oh, this person is not into me. Okay, not everyone's going to be into me. You can't expect everyone to be into you. I already talked about this in the last podcast. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about fucking Marvel movies, dude. Yeah, baby, Marvel movies. There's uh some Marvel movies coming out, or what? Captain Marvel is coming out with Brie Larson. Love Brie Larson, and uh, I'm sure it'll be good. I don't, I don't like Marvel movies. I d- I don't. Uh, I think I was done after the second Thor. I was like, yeah. No, the second Iron Man. That's what the fuck it was. I didn't even see the second Thor. I mean, I've seen other Marvel movies since then, but, like, I don't remember. Like, I saw Thor Ragnarok, right? And the next, the day after I saw it, someone came up to me and was like, hey, dude, did you see Thor Ragnarok? And I went, no. And he went, oh, you didn't see it? I went, no, no. Oh, fuck. No, yeah, I did. And he goes, was it good? And I go, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, it was good. It was good. That's every Marvel movie is, oh, oh yeah, it was, yeah, I, I liked it. Like, none of them are offensive. None of them are, none of them are memorable. You don't remember any of those fucking movies. I can barely remember a scene from any of those goddamn movies. Because it's it's this perfect blend of... Of how do we make a movie that's not offensive at all, that's just a pure crowd pleaser, it's very entertaining, it's like a mediocre, mediocre roller coaster ride, right? You get everyone to get on the ride, you get everyone to have a good time, a little bit of a thrill on it, but at the end of the day, they're talking about fucking King the Ka, they're not talking about the dragon coaster at Rye Playland, that's what fucking, that's what it is. Everyone likes the dragon coaster at Rye Playland. I don't know if you've ever been there, but go ride it and you'll see what I'm saying. Everybody loves the dragon coaster at Rye Playland, but nobody remembers riding it. Everyone goes, oh, that was a fun little ride, but everyone talks about how they felt on King the Ka. Everybody fucking... Just who... I don't care about... They're all the same fucking thing. What happened to, like, one person? Also, I don't like team shit. I don't like team movies. I don't like... Why do you think I'm doing a podcast alone right now? I don't like other people. (laughs) I hate the Avengers. I don't like it. And everyone loves the new Avengers. Why? Because everybody died, but they didn't fucking die? If you see the trailer for the new one, you already see, oh, everyone's coming back to life. Oh, so who gives a fuck that they all died? It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It literally doesn't matter that they killed off all those people. Also, I don't get it. Like, they kill off Spider-Man. They kill off Black Panther. Your brain doesn't immediately go, oh, none of these, none of these choices are permanent. Oh, all of these choices are bullshit. And in the next movie, they're all going to come back to life and we're going to go, oh, who gives a fuck about the first one? 
I'm just a bitter fuck. If you like, if you like those movies, man, that's cool. But like, fuck those movies. That's the thing too. I'll probably see Captain Marvel and I'll like it. But then the next day, someone will come up to me and go, "Hey, did you see Captain Marvel?" And I'll go, "No." And then they'll go, "Are you sure?" And I'll go, "Oh shit, no, I did see that fucking movie. Oh yeah, was it good?" Yeah, Brie Larson was good. Yeah, it was... Yeah! It was... Yeah! Yeah. I mean, those movies are well made. They're all fucking... They're perfectly made. They get the most skilled fucking directors in the industry to make their movies. Like, there's a reason why they're all so fucking good and make so much fucking money. But they're all just... Eh. They're all just like... Ugh. I guess... I guess. I don't know, man. Now I just feel like a fucking spoil sport. I feel like a fucking asshole. Oh, let's talk about other things that we all can relate to. <laughs> and I shit on fucking Marvel movies. What can we all relate to? This is what we can all relate to. Hopefully. If you can't relate to this, fuck you. <laughs> No, it's okay if you can't relate to this. Um, I, w I went to the Patrice O'Neill benefit the other uh, the other day. Patrice O'Neill. Uh, they do a benefit every year. He's a comedian who died in 2011, I believe. 2011 or 2012. Anyway, he was one of my favorite comedians of all time. But he has a benefit every year, and they usually have a stacked lineup. This year was Michelle Wolf, Mark Norman, Chris Red, Joe List, uh, Big J Ogerson, Bill Burr. It was fucking. It was stacked. It was. It was a great show. But um, I bought my tickets a couple months ago, and um, I did print at home because I thought I would print it at home. But my computer broke the week of the show, so I didn't have access to a print to to my laptop to print anything. And also, they, I checked my email. They didn't send me a link to print the fucking tickets. So at that point, it's not really on me, right? So I get to the place. And uh, I go up to Will Call. And no one's online. There's one person ahead of me. And then one person behind me. That's it. So me and my brother go up to Will Call. And I go, is this, can I get my tickets here? And she goes, what's the name? And I say my name. And then she goes... You, uh, she looks it up on the computer and then she comes over and she goes, uh, she goes, you ordered print at home tickets, so you were supposed to do that on your end, but I'll print them out right now for you. Excuse me. You hear that? You were supposed to do that on your end, but I'll print them out right now for you. Why are you telling me that it was supposed to, why are you being fucking passive aggressive? It was supposed to be done on your end? Well, it didn't happen on my end. And also, you're printing them right now, right? So it literally doesn't fucking matter that I didn't print them. Also, there's nobody in line right now. Is it? Are you mad because I'm giving you a little bit of fucking work to do? Like, why are you giving me shit? Just print the fucking tickets and say have a good night. I don't understand why she had to fucking do that little jab. Um, it was supposed to be done on your end? Yeah, you guys were also supposed to send a link on your end, and that never fucking happened. But I'm not going to blame you, lady, because I don't think you send the links personally. Okay? And you don't know the fucking reason I have for not fucking... You don't know the reason I have for not fucking printing it? Maybe I have a good fucking reason, dude. Anyway, this fucking cut out. This fucking... The battery went out on this. But, uh, I can still use the audio from the camera, so you still hear me. Anyway, fuck that, right? Am I right with that? Fuck that. That's fucking bullshit. Fuck her. <laughs> Just do it. Why are you, why are you being shitty to me? I don't understand it. Don't be shitty to me because I forgot to, pr I didn't get a link, dude. I had no way of printing it. Okay. It got me so angry. I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I don't get the fucking point of that. Anyway. Stupid shit gets me angry, man. People, people, uh... 
Like, I don't know a lot of popular music, and people will start singing a song in front of me, and they'll go, you know the song, right? And I'll go, no, I don't know the song. And they go, oh, yeah, you do, you know the song. And I go, no, dude, I don't listen to the radio, I don't know the song. They're like, you don't know this Taylor Swift song? I don't fucking know the song, dude. Why would I be lying to you about not knowing the song? I don't know the song, okay? Let's move on from this, because this is fucking irritating now. I don't know the all of the music everybody listens to. I listen to fucking dumb bullshit music that nobody listens to, and that's why I don't put music on at a party. Because I'll be fucking lost. I'll put on Earl Sweatshirt's new album, and I'll be like, Depression, this is not a phase, hey. And everyone will be like, why are we so sad now? Fuck this kid. Alright, that's the second timer. Um... This was a lot of fun, guys. I'll try and make sure that doesn't happen again with the audio crapping out. Uh, but, uh, dude, I'm having fucking so much fun. Um, if you're on YouTube right now, like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. If you're on SoundCloud, follow me on SoundCloud. If you, uh, My Instagram is jmotherfathersister. Uh, follow that, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Or, if I don't, I'll just sit here and talk to myself. Alright, have a good one.